Right, well, good afternoon everybody, once again, welcome back to the plot. Uh, don't hold me, you little 6x6, there's a few little jobs I want to get tidied up down here, and I say, tomatoes are absolutely rotten away down here. These are the later ones I sowed. I didn't sow these till uh, back in the April, and uh, of course in a few weeks time they're rotten away. But, um, what I want to do today is uh, just to show you how to take a couple of, um, couple of easy cuttings, side cuttings. Um, it's frustrating once you get tomatoes all planted out, everybody, everybody's the same. I've done it myself. You've got two dozen lovely tomatoes put to one side, plant them out in your greenhouse, and of course, a couple of days later, one or two of them collapse over. Sometimes through no fault of your own, you know, they may get a bit of virus or a bit damn, a bit of a disease, a bit of a virus, anything, and then just collapse over. And then if you haven't got any spares for backups, you're left with two or three gaping holes in your greenhouse. But, um, I'm going to show you how we can fix that easy. Um, what I've done on the tops of these ones, and of course these are me alicante. I've only got six in here just to fill the greenhouse up. That's all it was, and it's, it, it's, it's looking fantastic in here. I'll show you in a minute. The pepper's not at the back there. They're rotting away. But uh, it's an easy little method is, of, uh, of taking cuttings from these. We call them suckers. A lot of people call them side shoots. But uh, these are the suckers, not me. Uh, just in case you start getting confused. So what we like, what I like to do, you can take them anyway. You can use a little, little, uh, little cups and a little bit of compost, sandy compost in anything you want. Uh, what I like to do is I just like to use these little little peat pellets. Quite easy enough to get a hold of online, and uh, and then just go to the top and take a side shoot off. We'll it backwards and forwards a couple of times. Now we have it. That's a first class cutting, and all you need to do is pellets. I just like to use a pair of scissors, just make a little incision in the, in the centre. Now, you can use a rooting compound if you want. Um, I've got a Clonex gel here, I sometimes like to use this. Uh, I've got a little bit, of, I've shook it up so I've got a little bit in the top of the jar there, so I don't contaminate the rest of the plant. And all I'm doing is I'm just sticking that where the wound is, in the top of that gel. Press it in, as far as you can get it, and then just firm around the top. Now these little peat pellets are great to use, but um, they're a bugger if you let them dry out. So, a couple of little tips on just, there we are, there's one there. It's a perfect little cutting that. It's uh, nicely in its pot. Now I'll show you one, what I've got here, that's an old CD. I've got two, three, four, five. I've got six. I'm going to take six little cuttings. That's just an old CD box. So what I like to do is, with these pellets, I like once they're well soaked, I like to keep a little bit of water in the bottom, just a little bit, just to, and that keeps them nice and moist. It stops them from drying out. That's the worst thing you can do is let these fellas dry out because, as I say, they're they're a bugger to get wet again. So just uh, you can use a little bowl, a little shallow bowl, anything like that. Here's the one I took at the beginning of the week, and he's already, he's rotting away. I took him on one day, and uh, as I say, that's the bottom of a cup, I've just cut the bottom of a cup away, a little bit of water on the bottom, and he just sits in there, quite happy. You can put him under a container if you want. Put some, uh, some plastic containers there, you can use one of them if you want, but keep them out of direct sunlight, because say uh, that's the worst thing you can do. Um, I'll put them on this side where I've got the, um, where I've got the, the bubble mat on here and uh, behind the tomato plant so they've got a little bit of the shade and uh, they'll grow away really well. But, uh, as I say, you can use anything, just use a bowl just as long as you, as long as you keep a little bit of moisture in, you keep them nice and moist and in a week's time they'll be uh, just sprayed every day. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of water, I'll, I'll put a little bit of seaweed in my water and uh, just give them a spray in every day and rob away. And of course, they'll, sh they'll sharp catch up because they're the same, uh, they'll be exactly the same as what their parents are. Yeah. I'll have to, there's two smaller ones on there. That one's a little bit small. There's a bigger one on that side. I'm going to take that one off. Once again, there, there's a nice little one there. I took that one off there. Just run the 
run it around the lid there with some juice. Put a little hole on top of that one. Easy enough job to do. It only takes you five minutes. But as I say, well done, and then just squeeze it around the top. Just so it comes in contact with your, with your compost and there we have it. First pass. And what you do, you'll have little plants like that. That you can fill in gaps if you do lose any tomorrows. Or if you haven't put enough for two and say for spares. But uh, that's the main job. And the easy route this time of year. Late May and, and of course the sunshine now. Absolutely fantastic. We'll just pop that one back in there. Then put them, them two in there. And we'll leave them there for a moment. I'm just going to turn this video around. I'm going to have to get myself a film crew one of these days and just switch around. And there we have it. I've got my peppers in the back there. Now these rolls stopped a fortnight ago. Uh, if you look at my last video, they're absolutely belting away. I'm over the moon with them. Might have to turn that up a, t a tad because I think it's uh, a little bit low there. Yourself a new camera view of the moon. But there, uh, yeah, peppers are belting away. And they've got multi shoots coming up the sides in the top of the moon without that's a lovely one, that's the back there. But what's going to happen is they're going to stay short. These side shoots are going to come out and uh, they're only going to come to about that high, hopefully. Maybe it's get the roof. That, that's the whole idea. If I was to let that just grow on and grow on and grow on without cutting it out, it would have been up here before it started breaking and self branching itself. That's the idea of stopping them at six pairs of leaves. Um, but as I say, my tomatoes are on the way. Peppers are on the way. It's unbelievable the weather. It's absolutely big and hot here the last three days. Uh, only a week ago it was. We had uh, the heavy gales last weekend when I started the video. Gales from the Friday right through to the Monday. And a week before that we had frosts. Welcome to the northeast. It's uh, absolutely unbelievable. You just don't know what the weather's going to be from one week to the next. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to stop like this. Now, we've got two or three um, main jobs I want to get done for this video. I want to get cracking on the three sisters, which, of course, again, I mentioned it in my last video. I was going to start on it. The corn's just about ready. They're up like that. Good eight inches high. Strong, lovely little plants. They fill that pots. So, it's up to me and Roger now to get the. Um, get another section of the early titties dug up which is what we we'll normally do um, the bank holiday on Monday every year end of May bank we'll get the titties dug up and we'll get the sweet corn in so the timing once again and the time is spot on sweet corn and just nice I've got some smaller corn for outside but it'll not come until the middle of June when it's uh, a little bit warmer but then um, we'll get that sweet corn planted I've got the melons in small pots I might pot them up and let them for another fortnight, and I've just sowed some runner beans uh, about two days ago. Well, in this weather, they'll probably be up in about 10 days' time. As long as I get nice short dwarf beans to plant alongside there, this week, corn, I'll be over the moon. But uh, it's all about getting the land prepped first. What we'll do, we'll dig up the taties, I'll check the land, see what the, what the numbers are like. If you need any lime, any muck, I'll do that, get all that done, and then we'll start planting out. Get the, get the canes in for the sweet corn first, that's the main thing get them all planted out and then we'll follow on with the melons and then maybe next week once the beans are high enough we'll get the beans planted but that's, that's our three systems it's growing three crops in one in one station if you can do that great but say uh, as I say all the crops rely on each other the melons will stop on the bottom they'll give you shade they'll keep it nice and cool keep the roots nice and cool and they'll grow away your sweet corn will grow up and your beans will grow up the sweet corn Plus, beans being as they are, they produce nitrogen. It, it, module, it, and nodules at the roots are produce nitrogen, so that'll feed the sweet corn. And of course, they'll climb up the sweet corn, can up, up the stake, and give them a nice strong plant. And plus, you get a crop of beans. So that's three crops in one. It can be a bit difficult. It's all about timing. That's what I keep saying. If you can get your timing right, it's spot on. Up there. I told me little suckers. As I say, it's a plant, it's not me. Uh, a lot of people call them sages, we call them suckers. A two there, and no doubt within a week's time they'll be flourishing and strong little plants. They can just plant in any of your stations where you've lost tomatoes. Sometimes you have good years, sometimes you have bad years. We've all done it, we've all lost tomatoes. Uh, it's just one of them plants that's uh, really awkward at times. 
If you haven't got any temperatures ready, if you haven't got your, your light, your sunshine, you can draw long leggy plants, that's no good to anybody. You know, they'll be weak, they'll take ages to pick up. <coughs> but these are strong. <coughs> They've got the first trusses on, so by maybe next week, when some flowers drop off, the bees are in out here all the time. <coughs> Once you see a flower drop off and the small tomatoes are on, I'll start giving them a light feed. Now also what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'll give the nettle barrel a good stirring up last week, and uh, <coughs> it did not clear my chest, it was fantastic. So I'm going to start using that tomorrow. I've got my uh, croissants planted out in the pots. Uh, they're in now, and they said, I nipped them all yesterday, nipped all the tops out, so they're uh, able to to start romping away, so all I want to do is give them First, the feeding of, of, um, of the nettle juice and the strawberry plants. I must get the strawberry plants into this uh, As I say, I was a bit disappointed with the Albion ones, but I've thrown loads of side shoots out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to persevere with them, give them a good clean up, good spraying, good feeding. I'm not so bothered about fruit off them this year, but I want to get them runners off, and then I'll grow them away. I'll let me grow the strawberries, and uh, I always get a first class crop. So if I get some good runners off them, no doubt I'll have some nice young plants for next year to train them the way I like to grow mine. But uh, that's it for now. We'll get ourselves up the plot and uh, we'll get started getting this bed ready for the yeah, for this week going. Okay, I'll see you all up again in the plot. Okay, right, well, as long as you get up here, early evening. Oh. It's absolutely baking in here. Uh, what I managed to do the weekend was to cut away the plastic from along the skirt on the on the big tunnel that we're in now. And uh, all there's now is net, so it's letting fresh air through all day long because the heat in the air was absolutely horrendous um, at the beginning of the week. So we will cut the, cut the polythene away. This whole tunnel is going to be recovered at the end of this year, so we're just uh, we're making do. It's got patches all over. We've got debris netting holding parts of it down. But at least the roof's on, and that's the main thing. Let's keep my what crops clean. What I managed to do this week, I've got all the peppers along here planted out. I've still got some more to plant out tonight, so I'm uh, I'm going to concentrate on getting them done. What I managed to do is get all my croissants planted out. And uh, what I did do at the beginning of the week, I got them planted the weekend, and I went right through them, and I stopped them all. I just nipped nipped all the tops out of them. Now if you remember a couple of weeks ago, when I showed you the ones in the bottom polytunnel, the ones I had stopped, knocking their heads off, and there we are. That's a first class example. Now we're stopping it there, you can see there, where we I nipped the top out of it there, and we've had one, there was four, five on this one, so I've, I've cut it down to three, because I like to flower mine three up. So you can see one, two, three shoots come from the sides. There was a cut around that side, but I pulled them off. And that's uh, that's what these will be like in a couple of weeks time. You can actually see this one's already broke. This is already broke natural. And there's uh, there's one, two, there's three side shoots on there. So I've just let that go. There's a crown bud there. Yeah, there's a crown bud on this one here. So I'm going to nip that bud out, nip the little bud out, and let the three side shoots grow. Uh, and it's just after that, just keep an eye on them. But uh, they're nice and healthy. I've had a spray with garlic. I give them a garlic spray the weekend. There's a little bit of leaf miner, I've noticed. They're not a bad pest really, but if, they get a, if you get a bad infestation, they look really bad on the show bench, um, if they're showing you croissants. Because what the leaf miner does, it gets inside the leaf, it buries away, um, eating away through the inside of the leaf, and you, you end up with white marks all over the leaves. It's not very sightly, but normally I don't bother with them. But if they get too bad, I'll get a bit of a rhubarb spray, make a bit of rhubarb spray up, and just spray them with that. And uh, hopefully that'll cure it. The main job I want to do the night, I've been through the tunnel, and I've stirred the, the nettle barrel back up again. You can smell it from here, actually. So what I've done, I've put, um, I put a bucket through, through a strainer. I've just got a small strainer that I stand on top of the dish. And there we have it. Nice green juice. Nice green juice. Or enough there for two watering cans. That's half filled it with fresh water. 
and then top it up with the nettle juice. So it's 50 50 for these. But to give them an early boost. They're in the fresh compost now. They've only been in this compost for a week. So what I want to do is I want to get them get them growing, get the roots growing in that soil. Once again, just half half fill the watering can and then the rest is nettle juice. Absolutely stinks. But it's a, <laughs> but it's a first class feed for full of nitrogen. And that's the first feed for the croissants this year. All the feeds we're getting from that, from the compost, nothing else. Give them a really good drink because they're on a bit on the dry side. I don't mind my croissants being a little bit dry. Uh, when you're mixing the nettle juice up, don't be tempted to put a, um, a watering spot in the end because it'll just block up. You get lots of little bits of fibre. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people just put the nettles in a bag, but I don't bother. I just have them straight in the tank, give it a good stir up, let them rot down, and uh, if, as long as you've got a good wide neck on your watering can, it'll pour through fine. So they have, they have had their first feed this year, I'm over the moon with that. Great. Nice feed of nitrogen. Um, as I say, what I'll probably do, I'll give them a, probably give them another spray next week, but they're looking lovely and healthy, nice and clean, there's no... There's no sign of any pests on them, and of course they've all been stopped now. We've all had the top snip out, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll see a, a lot of growth. There's actually growth come from these ones already. They've only been they've only been nipped out two days, and there's a there's a young buds growing away there now from the side shoots. So fantastic, they're going great, and hopefully we'll get some nice early blooms off there. I've still got a few outside to plant. I'm going to plant them in the garden. Maybe it's next weekend when I get a bit of time. I'm doing okay for the moment, and I'll just there. Uh, I'll stick them in the garden once I get a bit, once I get a bit there, uh, time to spend on them. I'm just going to knock this round and uh, hopefully get a, yep, that'll do there, that's fine. This is one of my main jobs this weekend. Now we're just going to come up with me in the morning. I think that's fell back over, is it? We're just going to come back up with me in the morning. And what we're going to do, we're going to get the last of these taties dug up here. Because um, she has a, we've had the, um, the the jazzy potatoes, absolutely fantastic. I'm going to I'm going to get the folk over there in a minute. I just want to show you some of these. Now I always time my my sweet corn for the end of this month, which is the, the bank holiday Monday. And there we have it. Here's my sweet corn, just ready. The, the roots are just popping through the bottom there. And they're lovely, strong little plants. I'm over, over the moon. Fantastic. And now them will be planted out into here. Uh, hopefully this weekend we'll get them planted out. And then of course what I've, what I've got here is the melons. The melons are shooting away there. They're going to have to have a good water on the night. And their roots are at the bottom there. Here's the melons. They're ready to go in. I've got six of them. To go between these two beds here, and then I've just sown two rows of beans in the tree over there. So I'm hopefully in the next fortnight the beans will be up a decent size. We can plant alongside the sweet corn, and that's three crops in one bed, and that's the way to do it. Uh, but as I say, timing's everything. It's getting timing right, and you can grow crops quite easily. Uh, this is the second crop of sweet corn, and as you can see there, the only half the size of them. But once again, timing's everything. I never plant my sweet corn out until the middle of June up north here, because it can be still be still be cold. As I said before, I mean the weather the last fortnight has been absolutely ridiculous. Um, from red hot sunshine to blowing a gale to frost just a fortnight ago, which just goes to show you. So I planted them a couple of weeks behind them ones, and that's them there, and they'll be ready in three weeks' time to go out on the plot. Yeah, never in any hurry to plant outside. Roger's been there uh, busy packing some leeks out and onions. They're out in the beds. They're nearly all finished the beds outside. So what I'll do in the next video, I'll have a walk around and we'll show you what we've been doing. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well pleased with them. What I've got to do with the night, I've had to come up and I've got, um, I've got eight chilies 
Um, still to pot up. I've got the um, the long Thai chili, the red Thai chilies. I've got six of them to pot up in the big pots, and I've got some of these small yellow block peppers. So I'll get another six of them potted up, and they're going into the far greenhouse where at the moment it's full of tomatoes. Um, we haven't got the tomatoes planted in today yet because uh, we've got early potatoes in that greenhouse too. So they're going to have to be lifted. The tomatoes are getting a, a heck of a size in there, but we'll pop in there before we uh, before we knock off. <coughs> and I'll show you what's been happening in there. We've got, um, we've got strawberries over the back end. There. Now Dave Shaw commented that he lost his um, Senga Giganta. Well, there's mine over there. I've just brought them inside. They've been outside all winter. Yeah, they're a little bit small at the moment, but some good heads of fruit on them. And what I'm going to do the night, I'm going to give them a good dose of Epsom salts. I've just done the ones in the bottom polytunnel. Um, as I commented on my me, me Facebook page, I was, I was disappointed in the new strawberries, uh, Albion. They're not grown as uh, nowhere near as well as what, as what I would like. But um, hey ho, I'll, I'll persevere with them. They're throwing out loads of side shoots. So I'll take, um, I'll take a load of runners this year <coughs> and I'll grow them the way I like to grow them. And hopefully we'll get some first class crops out of them next year. Now I finished my grapevines there uh, last weekend. Uh, you can see they're all nice and tidy, all tied in. And the runners, I've got one, two, three, three crossing over. I've got one coming up this side to, to grow along this top, and I've got one along the top bean. So I've got five shoots on that one, which will uh, hopefully give us loads of grapes next year. But uh, yeah, as I say, the strawberries are single gigant, and that's them up there in the pots. And what I'm going to do with them, I'm going to, um, I'm going to just feed them. <laughs> Uh, once a week now, give them a good spray and keep them nice and clean and hopefully I'll get some nice runners off them. Uh, and that way I know, because once I like to treat my strawberries completely different, uh, once once I get them rooted in the pots, I like to pot them up and pot them on and pot them on. Plenty of root growth, but at the same time keeping the plant well down, nipping any flowers out that come on, but I'll explain all that as, I, as we'll go on. The important thing is to get a nice big root system built up on your plant before you you plant it out at the end of the year and that way it'll, uh, it'll grow a lot faster next spring and you get a first class crop but I'll show you all that when we get onto, uh, on, on to get, in, on to get onto the, uh, the strawberry beds right so I'm going to just stop this for the moment and I'll go and get me find out where my fork is and then I'm going to have a, <coughs> a little dabble at these um, jazzy potatoes and I'll show you just what sort of a crop we can expect from them Okay. Oh God, the heat is absolutely cooking in here now. Uh, as I say, these have been the jazzy. We've had this whole bed completely covered with the jazzy taties this year. I will need to get this out this weekend. At least this bed and the next bed to plant these 20 sweet corn. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll dig these out tomorrow morning. I've got my soil tester. I'll take a take a test of the soil. <coughs> see what the numbers are like. I mean, if it's up round about the five, five and a half mark, I'm quite happy with that. I'll just leave it. All I'll do is I'll probably put a sprinkling of lime over, maybe even put a couple of handfuls of blood fish and bone, and uh, the sweet corn will go straight into here, no problem. But as you notice, we've got the weepy hoses. This is the only trouble with the potatoes, is because we've got the weepy hoses running down the, the centre of the beds, both sides and the centre. And of course, the potatoes tend to grow either side of them. And the fussy potatoes will grow anyway. So we, we've just got to watch the hoses as we work our way down. I'm going to take this plant out here just to show you what sort of crop we've been. And of course these are the uh, our well, first earlies. They've been absolutely marvellous. They've been well pleased with them. Oh, absolutely beautiful. And that's why we're... Uh, that's what jazzy potato. Absolutely first class and there's no better taste than that. Absolutely beautiful. You get a few of them in a the pan. You boil them down a little bit of salt water, salted water. A bit of butter on them. Absolutely marvellous. And there's loads on them. They've been an absolutely great crop. Oh that's a nice one. Nice little doubler there. That 
I'll go on the funny veg but on the funny funny veg page. <laughs> right. Yes, we've been well chuffed with them. Absolutely first class. So there's a good good pound here. Oh that pound. Well please, I think they're well worth putting in the polytunnel early on. Yeah, of course these were sown in February. In the middle of February. Make sure there's nothing down below. It's probably from next door that one. These are sewn. Yeah. Still the odd ones. There's nothing worse than planting your sweet corn. Plant your sweet corn and find out five. Five or six days later, there's potatoes popping through. But that's, uh, that's the way it goes. Um, but that's for jazzy potatoes. Uh, we'll get this bed cleared tomorrow, and as I say, me and Roger dig the last of them out. We'll clear this bed off, and then we'll put our sweet corn in. But uh, I'll finish this video off when the sweet corn's all planted out. And uh, I'm going to go next door and just show you how we're getting on with the, with the last of the tomatoes. Okay. Here we are, right, we're in the wonderful greenhouse in the first part. Uh, as I was pointing out about the cucumbers, these are sucker teas, these ones. Uh, these were the first ones we put in, and already we've got three, four, four lovely cucumbers on there. All the moon with them. Behind them, we've got the, the yellow bonnet pepper. And in front of them, I've got some Thompson and Morgan giant tomatoes. I only had a few seed of these. But, <coughs> um, what I managed to do last night was to go through them. Now these are a different stage from these tomatoes. As I say, I grow my tomatoes in about three different batches. I'll show you when I turn the, the camera around. These were sown, um, these were sown at the end of March, beginning of April. So they, they, they grew pretty well. Uh, up until now they're pretty clean, but once again, we've got the old suckers coming on there and uh, or side shoots as a lot of people like to call them. I just work my way through them. <coughs> but this to me is an absolute joy because you get the you get the smell of tomatoes <coughs> when you're nipping the suckers out. But uh, apart from that they've been a they've been a pretty easy plant. There's a big side shoot on the top there, I'll take that one out. And of course there's the first truss there. Now they're a bit high for my liking for the first truss. There's a good foot and there's a good 14 inches there before the first trusses come on. These I was just trailing for this here to see how they come. But it's supposed to be a beefsteak from Thompson Morgan. There's another nice truss there. That one's a little bit lower down. But on the whole, the plants look pretty well. I'm pretty pleased with them. Um, we'll see what they crop like because I'm only cropping at, um, at three trusses. Uh, I've got another cucumber at this end here. And these are the this is one of the, the divas, and already it's first pass of flowers on there. If we can see the, the far end here, um, there's one at the far end, a, a diva. Nice big cucumber there, and that's, uh, that's absolutely wrong in the way. As I say, it's in a nice big pot, it's sitting in the tree, so I can go to the tree, no problems whatsoever, and it just grows away lovely. Now, that spray I mentioned last time. When I made with a baking soda, olive oil, um, Epsom salts, and a soapy liquid. That's great for cucumbers because <coughs> what it'll do, if you've got mildew on your cucumbers, that'll help with that and all. A lot of people um, used to use milk. Well, milk turns sour, as you know, in the heat, and it can give them a hell of a stench. But I would use, I like to use the baking soda on that, and that'll combat your mildew on cucumbers, as well as killing the pests at the same time. So that's another good tip to remember about that spray that I showed you. I will be making a big one up this weekend because I want to do all my peppers, all my chilies, and I want to add the, a bit of extra Epsom salts to get some of the potassium into these young plants. Now these are tied up, but um, what I've done, I've stopped all these, and there's, uh, there's one, two, three, there's four shoots coming off each one of them, and they're only a foot high, so that's perfect for in this greenhouse here. They're not going to get any taller. Them shoots are going to grow up and fruit now 
Whereas if I had just left them like I had stays down home, they would have grew for about 18 inches before they broke, before the, the tops naturally split and give you a lot of side shoots off. But these are growing fantastic up here. I'm over the moon with them. Well chucked. I brought this tomorrow in from the tunnel. And of course, this is one of the last tomatoes that I did sow. And if you remember, a couple of videos away, when I says you can grow tomatoes outside, up in the north here, um, this is an Ailsa Craig. Now, I've grown Ailsa Craig for years, and I think this is one of the best tomatoes for growing outside, especially up here in the north. What you need, though, is you need a self-facing wall. You know you know my back garden down home, you know what it's like. I've got the uh, boards all the way around the garden, and I can, I'm going to take one of these down home. It'll be not this week, because I, I, I don't plant my tomatoes outside, until about the second week in May. But uh, all I'm doing is I'm showing you what's possible and what isn't possible. I know down south you grow your tomatoes outside quite easy, but up north here it can be a bit difficult. If you get any chilly winds and they're gone, they're finished. Wind burn. Um, but uh, certainly for growing on outside, I would recommend this one all the time. I've grown for years and it's a lovely tomato. It's one of the old varieties, the old English varieties. There's a Craig. And it, uh, to me, it goes to the top of the list for for plants outside. And once again, um, now, as I say, when you when you nip your tomatoes out, you nip your side shoots out. Uh, for the newbies, uh, the new starters, if you're growing bush tomatoes, you don't have to nip off the, the suckers. Just let them grow, because they're your side shoots. They'll grow out and make a nice bush, and you'll have your tomatoes hanging down. That's the only thing, that's a, the only strain I haven't grown this year. I normally do have a, a couple of dozen of them. But um, I've, I've left them out this year because uh, I've run short a little bit of room. But uh, if you're growing your cherry tomatoes, your bush hanging tomatoes, don't nip any side shoots out, just leave them. This is only for your cordons, your main crop, uh, your eels at Craig's, your, your money maker, um, your gardener's delight. Just nip the side shoots out and grow them on a single single cordon, one stem, and then once you reach your, your, uh, the height that you want to, usually you're on about the six, seven foot mark in your greenhouses nip the tops out and then what I like to do is I'll show you later on in another video once the fruit starts setting I like to keep an eye on the trusses if there's some odd shaped tomatoes on or if there's uh, little misshaped ones or some uh, immature ones just grow on with a pair of scissors and nip them off if you've got three or four nice tomatoes on the truss then you've got a, a tiny little um, one on the side that's not grown and just nip it off that's what I like to do I like it. it's just pruning you <coughs> it's pruning the trusses and uh, we'll do that later on I'll show you these ones. These are some of the first tomatoes over here on this side. If I can get this door open. And of course these are some of my giant orange. And I've got a couple of hillbilly in here, I believe. Now I've kept the hillbilly because they were a lovely tomato. I think that's one of them, but there's some absolutely monster flowers been down there and of course some of the fruits are getting a bit misshapen but I'm just going to persevere with it. Uh, it's just a nice size here. That's got um, that's got two nice trusses on so that you know they're growing really well. A nice nice coloured. They've had no feed whatsoever. All I've had is what's in the pots and this is my own mixture. Um, <coughs> the three to one mixture I made again. We'll make a couple of heavy mixes up for these for the tomatoes. Um, all I'll add that is a little bit of um, a little bit extra manure, and uh, usually we're gonna we're gonna first cross tomato, but they're, they're growing away really well. All the more with them. Now, we, we tomatoes I mentioned before, the ones I took on a bench, they're in the hundred foot greenhouse now, and of course these are some of the Spanish ones. And now they're sitting on the benches, and they're gonna have to stop there for another week, so I'm gonna have, might have to give them a light feeding. Now if you look up there, and that's where Winston potatoes in that bed, and that's where them tomatoes are going to go. Now I'm hoping to leave them Winston for another week yet. Um, and then we may get around to emptying that bed and getting these tomatoes planted in. But uh, once again, first class Tom. Now if you look at the side shoots on there, there's absolutely hordes of them all the way down. But the plant itself, it's not getting too stressed out. With it. <coughs> Excuse me, with it just being a small pot. Get all them sage shoots off. And 
them. So just at the bottom of the pot here, and of course, the seedling leaves are still on there at the bottom. So that tells you if it's been grown correctly. Sometimes when you get the side shoots on and they get too big, watch them because sometimes what can happen when you pull it and you get a piece of skin running up like that. And sometimes it can get a virus into there or a, a disease and it'll knock them off. So just be careful with them. Use the face scissors if, they, if it, the side shoots like that one there, that's a massive one, that one. I'll just put that one on there, I'll stand it on there and I'll hold the plant because sometimes when you're rocking backwards and forwards you've got a chance to, to snap the main stem. Now that's something like that. Now I only took small ones down home and what you can do with them is to take them two side leaves off there and just leave that and stick that in a glass of water until you're ready to get yourself some compost and cut the pots and just pencil them in into the pot, same as what I did down home, and you'll get some, uh, you get some nice, uh, nice young tomato plants to fill in any spaces that you've lost. So that's that one done. I think I've covered just about everything on the tomatoes for the time being. Here's another great vine here. I'll show you in a minute. Now these are absolutely chock along here. There's two different kinds. There's a giant plum. There's a giant pod shaped tomatoes, and these are the bush tomatoes. The Spanish bush. Uh, I get tomato seed from Spain every year. Um, one of the nephews and one of the aunties always goes to Spain and always bring the uh, seeds back. And always worthwhile trying. Um, but they're looking lovely. Uh, fantastic little plants. Um, I'll move them over them. But what I want to do is to get them planted out into this border here. But uh, until them trees come out, that's not going to happen. Okay, so that's for tomatoes for the time being. A little bit of seaweed, just a touch of seaweed in the water, um, and give them a drink of that, and it, they'll be fine. It, they'll uh, they'll romp away. I'm not um, I'm not too fussed with them at the moment. I'm uh, like I say, they're, they're sitting in their pots here. If they're for another week, I'll be over the moon. Right, so we can finish off tomorrow. We'll get um, we'll get these teas dug out, <coughs> and we'll get the uh, we'll get the sweet corn planted. Okay, I'll see you all again soon. Right, well, once again, good afternoon everybody, welcome back to Plot. as you see it's an absolutely gorgeous sunny day up here in the northeast. Uh, we're still busy planting out, um, we're, we're getting caught up slowly but surely, I've got uh, small letters in amongst the uh, peppers and chilies there, all in boxes I've planted up, the croissants are all finished now, they've all been stopped, they're a bit dry tonight so I'm, I'm maybe just going to put a bit of water on them. What I did on at the weekend, at the end of the last video, um, I gave them a good drink of uh, nettle juice, and it's perked them up no end. They're looking lovely and green. Eh? I'm, uh, I'm pleased with them. So they're, uh, they're coming away fine. All they need is a good bit of water. And, uh, we'll do up the next um, two stages of the uh, of the jazzy potatoes, and as you see, there the well, sweet corns in there now. Uh, we've got 20 plants in there, and uh, they're absolutely thriving. And what a what I intend to do uh, this weekend is to get them, um, hopefully get these finished. Uh, I've got a few cucumbers climbing up here. Um, the sweet corn's in, we'll give them plenty of room. And what I intend to do this weekend, I've got the melons up there, I'm going to stick a couple of melons in between each bed. And of course the melons, well, the melons hopefully will just uh, cover the floor. Um, plenty of leaf, to keep it nice and cool. And then I'll come along up there. I've sowed some beans. They're, they're not shown yet, but with this heat, I can see them come through within the next couple of days, so they'll be fine. We'll get the beans, and we'll, once we get these um, sweet corn tied in, we'll let them get a, get, let them get a hole first, because they've only been planted a couple of days there. But once they start turning and twisting, you know they're, they're well rooted, and they're, uh, they'll start romping away. We'll grow them up, these canes. The canes are tied into the top runners here, or they will be soon. And I'll get them up nice and straight, and we'll just stick a bean down the side of there, and the beans can just romp away up the, up the sweet corn. I like, like to get them well ahead first before I put any beans down the side of them. But uh, yeah, at the moment, as I say, it's red hot in here. I've just, I've just come up, and uh, already I'm lathered. But uh, what I managed to do in the, in the big greenhouse, um, I was wanting to have a look at the uh, the Winston potatoes and see how them were doing. Uh, the 
weren't looking so grand because we were planting them same time as the jazzy. And uh, although there's a bit more fresh air gets into the big greenhouse because there's, there's caps along the sides, uh, it seems a little cooler and they just seem to be a little slow on coming on. But when I dug that first row, honestly, I couldn't believe the size of them. They're absolutely monsters. And that's the first early row. Winston. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some into one side and I'm going to grow them on again next year. I think I grew them quite a few years ago, but I think I grew them outside and uh, up north here yeah, it's very uh, unpredictable for, for early potatoes uh, getting caught up with frost and that. So that's why I never bothered over the last few years. They've always been inside the polytunnel. But with digging them up I was over the moon with them, so I'm going to put some to one side and I'm going to grow them on again next year. But I'll grow them on as a main crop in there. In the big bed, not in the not in the greenhouse, with the whippy hoses, and I think that's um that's the secret of having the whippy hoses. Turn your tap on, the water is everything. Whereas in the greenhouse, if you're just using a watering can, splashing water on, it doesn't uh, get ready to the plants where they need it. But uh, yeah, well pleased, everything's ticked along just nicely. What I've been doing is putting some of the bigger tomatoes off that's in the big greenhouse because um we haven't got the bed ready yet, so I'm putting them in there uh, in the ringless pots. I'll show you when we go through. And now we'll get this video online. But uh, as I say, the weather up here is absolutely fantastic. But uh, we'll pop in next door and uh, we'll see how we're getting on in there, okay? Right, well, here we are, if you can remember. We um, were in here a couple of days ago when I first started the video. And of course, these are the, these are the uh, Winston potatoes. There's only two rows left uh, up the top end there. And what I have done. The tomatoes that I had on this side, uh, that's them um, tomatoes up on the top here, uh, what I've been doing is I've been putting them up in the uh, rain culture pots and hopefully that way and put them on trays. As you can see along here, what I've done, I've put them on the rain culture pots on a big tray, getting eight on a tray. I've got another eight to do, but that's, that's a pot there, that's a rain culture pot. I'm putting them on the tray, fill it with compost, and then putting the putting these tomatoes in. God, these are wilting. They need a bloody good watering. But there, that's the idea. I put them in there in a bigger pot, and then once these potatoes come out in about two or three weeks' time, this pot will be full of root. The tomato will be up here. I'm cleaning them up, giving them a little tire, and now we can just shift them on the tray onto the beds. What we'll do, we'll probably give it a good lineman. We'll just check the check the numbers again, see what the, what the counter soil is. We'll probably give it a good lineman, maybe just turn a bit of bone meal into it, and then have the tomatoes on top of there. And I've got some, uh, I've got some courgettes to go in between these, some uh, summer holiday, so they'll, uh, they'll do the job great. But that's the, um, that's a Winston potato, absolutely marvellous, first class. Well, the move them, really nice. But uh, I'm surmising they make good scrapers, really nice and clean. But of course, this this bed was really dry. <coughs> I haven't got any weepy hoses in here, but I've got enough cable. I've got enough hose to make a couple of joints. And what I'll do, I'll take the outside tap. I'll put a three-way system on it, and I'll, I'll rig up a weepy hose for next year. <coughs> but because uh, it's going to save a lot of time. And if I'm going to have two or three rows of, um, of tomatoes off potatoes down here, get a weepy hose on and it saves you a lot of work, but uh, these tomatoes here, these have just romped away, I mean look at the size of that one there, so I'm going to have to pot another eight of these off tonight, take all the side roots off them, uh, put them in a big pot and stick a cane in them, and they'll be fine in there, just want to, just want damn good watering, but uh, really pleased with them, we've got tomatoes on in there, uh, got cucumbers on, Everything's ticking along just nicely. Tickety bow, I'm over the moon. Uh, nearly, nearly finished planting out outside. We've only got one bed left. I'll, um, what I'm going to start the video on next week, I want to take a few cuttings uh, for Marcus Shaw. For his, um, oh, unless he's getting, unless you've already taken your cuttings, Marcus. But I want to, I want to take a few cuttings next week in the start of next week's video. The, the deal is, I'll take a couple of cuttings. But what I like to do with mine. I like to make them into a pot tuber. Um, if you haven't got room to store daily, that's big massive tubers. Um, follow me next in the next video and I'll show you how to take um, 
what to make pot chewers. It's a simple, simple operation. Get your, get your cuttings rooted early and uh, pot them off into just a 9 centimetre or a 12 centimetre pot and leave them in that pot, let them flower, everything. And what you'll end up with is, is a nice little tuber where you can just store quite easily over the winter. I'll show you all that in the next video. What I want to do is to start in the garlic. Because um, we're June now, into June, uh, and the garlic should be ready. I was checking on the on the white, um, on the white garlic at the top of the bed, and uh, they, they look pretty good. So I'm going to take the, the first row up there next week. I'll take them up in the start of the next video, and we'll see what they like. Clean them down and get them hung, and then in that space I'll probably get a row of turnips or a row of beetroot. But uh, as I say, when something comes out, there's always something to go back in its place. But uh, yeah, I'm over the moon once again. I hope I've helped you. I hope we can be a few tips. I'll give you a show around the plot what we've been up to. Uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be manic the next couple of weeks. Like you can see, well, we're trying to get the strawberries out. Um, I've cleared the beds off. I'm getting rid of all my summer bedding or most of my summer bedding. Everybody's happy. The family's happy. Friends are getting loads of bedding. Uh, all my back benches are now clear, so I can start bringing the strawberries out. Uh, the first to come out are the um, are the colossus. They are already outside now. There's still a few fruits in them, but I'm not bothered. The birds can help myself with them. What I want to do is get them out in a nice cool air, fresh air, and start feeding them. And hopefully they'll throw out some nice runners. The Senga Giganta in this tunnel, and they are going to come out, but they are going into the back bed, where there's a bit of cover over them. Because they've been in the tunnel for a couple of weeks there now. Uh, I'll try to just bring them on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them out, take them a really good spray. I might make up a garlic spray this week, put a bit of soapy water in with it, then a bit of um, olive oil, just a bit of soap, uh, baking soda, I can make one of them mixes up. Give a good spray of that, give a good feeding, and put them up on the back bench because it's going to turn cold this Wednesday. Our forecast to be wind from the north and rain moving down from the north. So I'm going to be well prepared. I don't want to find leave anything outside that could be damaged because uh, the winds that we had last week were horrendous lots of comments online about different people losing different plants I nearly lost one, one of my clematis, uh, clematis that was up on the wall and the way the wind was blowing from the northwest, it had caught it and of course all the leaves on it was black so I just cut them away, cut the leaves away back to the main stem and they'll grow away again quite easily but uh, that's just one of the things you've got to be prepared if you get a heavy wind and it's cold, you're planting and stuff from wind burn. So just watch out for that. But apart from that, everything's ticking over just nicely. Um, we'll get the last of the tomatoes, maybe just next weekend, plant it out. But we'll get these taties here. Uh, but I'm well impressed with the Winston. I'll, I'll definitely grow them again next year, but I'll be growing them in the big tunnel, in the bottom tunnel. And uh, we'll see how they're growing there with the, with the whoopy hoses. But I'll definitely get a whoopy hose set up here for next year. But it's just one of them things that saves, uh, saves hours of work coming up with a walking can. I've got a, a muscle the size of a uh, Superman on this arm with uh, with pumping the, the barrels of water every night. But um, it's one of them things, we'll get by. My cabbages and bristles are all stand up nice and strong outside, but I'll show you that in the next video when we start taking the garlic out. But uh, until then, um, I'm going to crack on because I've got an hour's worth of watering to do now before I get myself way back down home and then lock up the greenhouse down home and then maybe by then I'm ready for a, a shower and a cool beer. That's, uh, that's a plan. But, um, thanks again. Thanks for all the new subscribers. I hope you're getting a little bit of, bit of help from our site. Um, we'll try to give you as much information as possible as we move through the seasons. Uh, we've always got stuff to do so as I say we'll try and post a video every week if we can. If you can't wait for the videos, and then get one on my Facebook page, we're on there most nights, uh, chat with different people around the country, and it's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot, just send my friends request and we'll, uh, we'll get you signed up to Facebook on my, on my Facebook page. But uh, up to now, uh, I'm well pleased because we're nearly a thousand numbers on that, and uh, it's great. Multi sharing that goes on, different people, different ideas, you know, wanting to know this, wanting to know that. If we cannot help you, there's always somebody on our site that will. So, as I say, if you can't wait for the videos, get over on our site and send me a request and we'll, we'll get you signed up. But for the time being, we'll leave it until next week. We'll start on some cuttings and we'll get that first row garlic up. And uh, hopefully it'll be a, 
be a canny crop. If it's as good as what the teaches are, I'll be over the moon, champion. Right, okay, so I'll see you again all again next week. Bye for now.